all white people are racist. So <laughs> I put this up because I really want any white person in the room to know up front that this is what we're dealing with, that it's not going to be this coddling of white tears and what that looks like. We're not going to discuss, oh, maybe some of us have worked it out. No, you're always going to be racist, actually. So even when you're on your path to trying to figure out how to be a better human being, um, because I believe that white people are born into not being human, like that actually instead of people of color and black folks being dehumanized, that actually everyone is dehumanized off rip within white supremacy, that y'all are born into a life to not be human, and that's what y'all are taught to do, to be demons. So in this particular way, white people are all racist. So I just want y'all to know that up front. Wow, uh, stand-up comedy really sucks as of late. Wait, what? It's not stand-up comedy? It's a class. It's a class on. It's a class on inclusion. Now that's freaking hilarious. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Luke Radowski of WeAreChange.org. Continuing the coverage of the insanity and lunacy of 2020 because you know. Nothing says fighting racial discrimination like literally <laughs> racial discrimination itself and blaming a whole race of people on the DNA that they are born with and classifying that as a, quote, inhuman demon that is beyond redemption. And again, this is being done all in the name of racial inclusion. This is happening all across the United States, especially employees of major national corporations that are forced to sit through this. Still absolutely shocks me how yellow belly and cowardice this entire crowd is when faced with such bigotry. But again, what do you expect when this is all being done in the name of a Hollywood endorsed corporate sponsored mainstream media supported establishment approved movement that is deeming itself <laughs> anti-establishment. So yeah, we're going to document that utter lunacy, how it's unfolding in the streets all throughout the United States, how it's going to get worse. And most importantly, we're also going to be covering the most important court proceeding happening right now regarding the future of the freedom of the press. So yeah, lots to get into. But before we do, we wanted to remind everyone that one very easy, amazing way to support us and also support yourself with cryptocurrency and an extra layer of privacy and security is by simply using something like the Brave browser. This is, again, shockingly one of the ways that we are funded. You don't have to spend a dime. All you have to do is download this Brave browser from our specific URL, use it for over 30 days. I'm pretty confident you're going to be using it for a lot longer than that, with especially how much more efficient it is than Mozilla and Google Chrome. And if you do that, that gives us five bucks. You get some money as well. It's a win-win for everyone. Check out the Brave browser if, if you haven't yet. And then very easily, you could support independent media and yourself at the same time. And, and trust me, independent media needs your support more than ever. The outright trash and garbage put out by the mainstream needs to be countered. And the best way to do that is by supporting independent media. Downloading the Brave browser is one easy way to do so. Also, just a quick note, our apocalypse survival and self-defense training course is half sold out already. There's a limited amount of tickets. If you can be in Concord, New Hampshire this Sunday, I wouldn't want to miss this training. Get your tickets before they sell out. The link to that is also down in the description below. Now, whenever you teach someone that, that someone is not even human, that they're beyond redemption, that they're demons and in, in evil for being born a specific way, you're going to have a bad problem because we're seeing this type of hyperbolic, violent language repeated by the mainstream and, and not really countered. And if you do try to counter this language, you usually get shadow banned, censored, or 100% demonetized like this YouTube channel is. But as we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of these kind of horrible forms of rhetoric be espoused in the streets like we just saw in Pittsburgh, just like we saw in many other cities all throughout the United States where people are indiscriminately attacked and harassed just because of their skin color. And we have to understand these types of, of attacks are becoming more and more common even on individuals who actually 
do support their supposed cause of Black Lives Matter, which all of this is being done under the umbrella of. Obviously, race relations are at an all-time low as we are seeing a very effective campaign of divide and conquer literally play itself out in the streets, terrorizing random individuals for the world to see. Like this action that you just saw play out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or in Rochester, New York, where patrons who were trying to have a nice, quiet dinner alone were met with mobs that literally ripped everything away from their table and chased them out of establishments where they were just peacefully dining at. Again, chased out, targeted. Why? Well, we don't know other than potentially because of their skin color, which, again, we have to understand here is becoming more of a, of a common event. This is not an event that wins hearts and minds. This is not a movement of the masses. This is a movement that is meant to terrorize and put fear into people who don't go along with it. And a movement that is based off those philosophies and principles deserves to be called out for its intellectual fallacies. I'm sorry, but once you try to use fear and intimidation rather than logic and reason, you lost me and you should lose everyone else. But sadly, there's a lot of yellow belly pathetic cowards that just take it on the chin time and time again as if there's some kind of abusive BDSM loving subs that can't get enough of the freaking whip and those people definitely need to get a grip on themselves mainly because when you have violence instigated by a mob we have to understand the only thing that the mob will know is violence there is no reason there is no logic there is no conversations there's only hatred there's only the use of force which again will be utilized will be used against anyone standing in their way including black women that are disgruntled because of white protesters that are literally blocking the road and disturbing her life and the life of other people living in a community, a community that usually gets burned down. This weekend, we also saw a very poor attempt on the use of Molotov cocktails, which were thrown in Portland very ineffectively by some limp-wristed weenie who missed his target, which was the police, and hit a fellow protester that was jumping around in, of course, pain and agony as he was set on fire by his fellow protester. Idiots. Absolutely pathetic little whiny idiots that are literally going into poor people's neighborhoods and lighting them on fire. And again, you wouldn't know this by watching the mainstream media. You wouldn't even watch this if you're in your own little echo chamber on social media, which of course curates content for you just to hear your opinions regurgitated to you because that's what the algorithm does. So of course you buy more Chinese slave made crap that you don't need for major multinational corporations that are spewing this kind of divisive rhetoric and supporting it. Just like we saw Uber support it, the large banks who of course screw you over more than anything else, but we can't even talk about those. But we have to understand here, the civil unrest, the rioting, the violence is far, far more widespread than you think, than you have seen, as we are getting a report now that over 48 of America's 50 largest cities have been hit with civil unrest, rioting, and property destruction. Now, that's a lot of places that very conveniently a large swap of the mainstream media just chooses to ignore and then highlight how this movement is, quote, peaceful. Another thing to really consider here is that a lot of these protests who are screaming about fascism and a totalitarian state haven't been arrested. A lot of them who have been arrested have been let go by prosecutors who have been awarded a large sum of money by George Soros to win their particular political seats. In exchange, they let a lot of these rioters and violent individuals free even after they're arrested. But that's beyond the point, and I could just make a whole separate video about that in particular topic. But we have to understand here, another large facet to understand here is that the U.S. federal government, the militarized police all throughout this country, they have successfully squashed many protests, some of them peaceful, some of them not throughout our country's existence. They have the most amazing high-tech spying devices, full-scale capabilities to understand, see, and hear everything. But the state, many times, is allowing, or even sometimes in some instances promoting, these violent acts that usually hurt random citizens. And some people are calling this utter incompetency, but following and covering many demonstrations where the police have effectively shut down peaceful protests and other violent ones historically that I've been at, 
which makes you really wonder what's really going on here. And the point by the protesters that this is some kind of totalitarian state is utterly not true, especially with the mainline support that these protesters have from very powerful institutions that benefit off of this larger divide and conquer agenda. Again, a large swap of this protest is, is violent. It's intolerant of anyone who doesn't go along with their political different beliefs that they make up at the whim of a moment. And most importantly, we have to understand they routinely attack the press and we see the press many times not even report on themselves being attacked at these events and whether it's being physically assaulted or just being forced out an event we have to understand here there's a large swamp of this movement that literally is doing everything in its power so the people don't find out the truth about it. So we don't get images and videos that truly give you an honest perspective of exactly what's happening here. Now you compare this, especially with what's been happening in Hong Kong, a place that I personally covered, a place that is going through extremely violent protests, and the experience there as a journalist has been 180 degrees, absolutely total opposite of what it is during these demonstrations here in the United States. In Hong Kong, the, they, the press was accommodated, it was taken care of, it was looked after, and it was never censored. Here, time and time again, we are seeing press censored, we are seeing press getting kicked out, or even in some instances, press getting physically assaulted and beat up for simply trying to document what is going on at these protests. They are obfuscating it for a reason because they don't want you knowing the full truth of what they are actually up to. And this is in part why we still don't see the larger picture and how really wide scale these protests are because either the mainstream media obfuscates them, ignores the violence, or when they do try to cover it, they are stopped by the protesters who don't want any transparency. They don't want any accountability, but they do want to target random citizens who've done absolutely nothing wrong, haven't been convic convicted of any crime, and to unleash pain and suffering on them. Again, compare this movement to the Hong Kong movement and you have almost the exact polar opposite of what's going on here with even Google, who again is saying that they're woke, is saying that they care about Black Lives Matter and human rights and everything else, but in reality, when it comes to things like the Hong Kong protest, they have an atrocious record along with other big tech giants that have been on the side of China instead of the side of human rights, instead of the side of the Uyghur Muslims and all the other ethnic minorities in China that are being prosecuted and attacked and enslaved and put into work camps that are literally making Nike shoes. The same Nike shoes that support, of course, Black Lives Matter, but not the lives of the slaves that they hire in these countries. Again, I could just keep going on and on about the duplicity, the hypocrisy here, and it should enrage you like it enrages me. But, but, but look what's happening recently, especially with Google Streets just blocking any graffiti against the Chinese president in Hong Kong, going out of their way to, of course, censor any images that its Chinese authoritarian government won't like preemptively, siding, of course, with a violent state cracking down on protests who are fighting for their rights and their sovereignty. That is a protest movement that actually is fighting for something worthwhile, and this is why it's being squashed. The protests in the United States, they're not fighting for anything except divisiveness and random selected attacks on individuals based on their skin color. And again, telling the truth here is important. There's a reason a lot of these protests are, are blocking the press. There's a reason why Google, Facebook, Twitter is going out of their way to censor any criticism of this, quote, protest movement. And that is because telling the truth matters. And that's exactly what the case of Julian Assange of WikiLeaks demonstrates, which, by the way, the extradition hearing has just officially begun and if Assange is extradited from the United Kingdom to the United States, where Donald Trump has charged him with many obscure charges, he would face up to 175 years in prison. Already the beginning of this trial is starting with a lot of very abnormal and unfair conditions set up by the judge. Julian Assange's father described the proceedings as a, quote, abuse trial. Amnesty International was barred from watching over the court proceedings and even denied remote access to 
the exact motions and actions that are taking place right now. A lot of information surrounding this court proceeding has been censored and deleted by some of the news organizations covering them. There's also a lot of allegations by Assange's team that there was no contact with lawyers for close to six months. Many journalists can't even get coverage of the proceedings, and along with human rights organizations, are banned from even understanding what is going on. And I think Edward Snowden made a very good point when he said, quote, the extradition of Julian Assange is a malicious prosecution by standard. Even critics of the man ought to condemn this as a show trial. The crime in question is the greatest public service WikiLeaks ever performed, exposing Iraq-era abuses. Drop the charges, hashtag, hashtag free Assange. And I completely agree with that. How can you not? Because this is a very clear case. You are either for the freedom of the press, the truth, the ability to publish information, to whistleblow, to expose evil deeds and corruptions done by major institutions that are supposed to be working for us, or you are behind a totalitarian state that wants to destroy the free press. Which is oddly the same virtues espoused by this, quote, anti-establishment protest movement that's supported by the establishment. Huh, gee whiz, who would have thought? That's my take on it. If you thought I was incorrect or wrong on anything, please let me know why in the comment section below. I usually typically answer questions within the first hour that a video is out. So if you want to be a part of the conversation, click the subscribe and notification button. And maybe if you win the YouTube lottery, we'll be able to talk to you. Again, one last final note. Tickets are selling out fast for this Sunday. If you want to be a part of it, don't miss out on this very important training happening soon. I want to thank all you amazing individuals for being with me all the way up until the end of this video. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. And this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.